Hello, my friends. A couple weeks back, we decided to look at the, like, gameplay teaser stuff that StarCraft II was releasing when the game was in, I don't know, it was probably in alpha at that point. It was before the beta had started and all that kind of stuff, and we looked at the Terran gameplay trailer to see exactly how, back then, Blizzard wanted to showcase their new stuff. Now I want to go and look at the Protoss stuff. This video holds a lot of personal significance to me. It is the very first StarCraft video I ever saw for StarCraft 2. It was uh, before the game came out, and it's really the thing that got me super interested in the game. Because there had been a little bit of a break. Like, RTS was really big until about 2006. I was a kid then. And then there was, there was definitely a break when I was, like, in middle and high school. And then this thing came out, and I like was like oh my god rts is the thing oh, i'm so excited <laughs> you know as a teenager so my voice was cracking it was it was quite a good time <laughs> so let's uh let's give it a go i want to take a look at this i remember the things in this being crazy so let's uh give it a look and this video is fairly long so i am going to be pausing less than i paused last time maybe that's probably a lie <laughs> It's going to be like an hour and a half long, this video. I think the base video is 21 minutes. I like a little pan over shot. I wonder if they had to change the Phoenix to be really slow so they'd fit in this shot. I like right there that they don't have to tell you that it's a shuttle. In Tarawa Doom, Commander. Our forward base has been established. The foolish Terrans continue to bring their forces to this platform. They will serve only to feed the Zerg Swarm if we do not destroy them quickly. Glad they didn't stick with that voice filter. Only four SCVs loaded, not five. And got that big old buff eventually. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to show you a demo of StarCraft II. Before we begin today, I'd like to remind everybody this is a demo. This is still work in progress. We've got a lot of balance work ahead of us. Nothing you're going to see here today is final. We're going to begin today with these Protoss Zealots. This is a classic unit from the original StarCraft. You can see they're still armed with their powerful psi blades and they're still protected by a very tough personal body shield. Those zealots kind of remind me, I, they don't look like the zealots that made it into the game, but their wireframe, I think, maybe got reused for the prologue of Legacy of the Void. They have a very similar silhouette to the guys that are in the prisons, which is pretty cool that they got reused in some way, shape, or form. Also, did they have 60 shields? I think Starcraft that was 60. Too, the zealots also have a special charge ability. This allows the Zealot to close quickly with his enemies. The Zealot's charge makes him extremely dangerous against ranged defenders like these Marines. They're kind of... I mean, they're doing fine, but they're not... Oh, I like the... Oh, dude! I didn't really notice that before. Let's, uh, let's look at that one more time. They have, like, the High Templar movement effect from StarCraft 1 when they're charged. Look at that. That's really cool. So if you remember in StarCraft 1, the High Templar had a like shady kind of effect that followed it, and I always thought it was super sweet, and I thought it was really a shame that it didn't exist in StarCraft 2. Apparently charge lots were supposed to have that. It looks amazing. That's really cool. Probably was like visually disorienting, which is why they got rid of it. But man, for a single player thing, I wish that was in Legacy of the Void for like one of the upgraded zealots. It'd be awesome. Attention, Protoss. This is That's really interesting. Uh so this is a thing that doesn't exist in the game anymore. It looks like uh back then their buildings were actually square, not circular. Uh they have circular hitboxes in the current game, and this guy, if you watch him, is attacking from about halfway across the universe. Admiral Gascavir of the Terran Dominion. You will withdraw immediately or be annihilated. 
Terrans are bringing in their siege tanks. This is a classic unit from the original StarCraft, and they're in a classic Terran position, using that high ground against us. They're shelling our zealots from range, forcing our zealots to go the long way around, and you can see our infantry are just taking a pounding as they try to approach this Terran position. They just can't withstand all of that heavy Terran firepower. I'm glad they did a visual pass on this siege tank, honestly. I think that this one looks kind of derpy. It looks like, uh, it looks like it's wearing lipstick and it's like, gonna kiss you. <laughs> it's kind of derpy. In order to attack a Terran position like this, that's so well defended, we're gonna need to bring in another new Protoss weapon of war. After the destruction of Ire and the events of Brood War, the Protoss have been forced to adapt. They created these. These are the Immortals. They have a special type of Protoss shield. It's a hardened shield that activates only when the Immortal is struck by a very powerful attack. You can see the hardened shields are activating now, and they're absorbing most of this Terran fire. This makes the Immortal the perfect choice to assault this kind of defended Terran position. I miss the Immortal Hardened Shield. I thought it was really cool and unique. The barrier is so much more boring. Reapers, move it! Slaughter them, boys! Here they come. The Terrans are sending in their Reapers. This infantry unit is armed with two pistols and uses a jump pack to avoid different types of terrain. Their small pistols don't activate the Hardened Shields of the Immortals. This makes the Reaper the perfect choice for countering these powerful Protoss troops. Let's just ignore that it's like 10 times the cost of Reapers and the Immortals are still doing kind of decent. This kind of fast, bloody... Whoa, they jump from a long distance there. My goodness. Raid. Something the Reapers really excel at. You can see how powerful they can really be hunting down slow-moving units on the field of battle. In addition, the Reapers can use their jump packs to be very effective base raiders. I wonder if that was overpowered. Like, the first thing that I instantly think with these Reapers is that if they could jump that far away, it would be so hard to chase them near cl cliffs. That would be really interesting as, like, an upgrade for them. Maybe give them a little bit more viability in the mid to late game. I don't know, put it on the tech lab, require a factory, something like that. Back, uh, that's how Nitro Packs used to be. I don't think it would be super busted. I mean, Terran is really good right now. But still, that's, uh, it's really interesting. It's so much distance. No anti-structure grenades. Once enemy forces are inside a Protoss base, one of the first things we'll often go for is our pylons. And with our pylon down, our photon cannons go offline, making us vulnerable to continued attack. Fortunately, we have some new weapons. The Protoss can use the phase prism to create a power field anywhere they wish. You can see with our photon cannons back online, these Reapers, have no choice but to run for cover. I'm pretty sure the Reapers, like, win that fight anyway. <laughs> they were really close to killing one of those cannons, and then they probably could have torn through the second really quick. One cannon wouldn't have done that much damage. <laughs> I think the Reapers were fine. <laughs> uh, I know it's staged so that you can show off the cool stuff, and I really like that they're telling you what the Terran stuff does, too. I like that they're telling you what the Terran stuff does as well, but like, <laughs> if I can read that fight at all decently, I am pretty sure that first cannon was about to die in the second. Would have, uh, I mean, that'd only be two cannons of DPS. Protoss also have access to some new mechanics. Protoss can use warp in to teleport units anywhere they want into pylon power. You can see here we've created some stalkers. This is a new type of specialist Protoss Dark Dragoon. They're so short. It's not very tough, but it does have a powerful weapon. In addition, it has a special blink ability that allows it to teleport a short distance anywhere it can see. This allows the Stalker to avoid certain types of obstacles. Wow, they do a lot of damage. Either that or Reapers do not have very much HP. Stalker. Very potent at chasing down fleeing enemy forces. Man, if we played on normal speed like this, the Stalker would be undisputed the best unit in the game. Just uh, the 
The game speed is one of the things that makes the stalkers not as good. It's a reason that Alpha Star was such a big fan of the stalker is because it had, you know, infinite APM and perfect reaction time, which means it didn't need a brain. All it had to have was perfect stalker control. And like, man, if we played at this speed, Protoss would be obscenely overpowered. <laughs> Zerg forces detected. Multiple contacts closing in on our position. The Zerg have arrived sooner than we... That was a... Re it's like so long. The amount of time you have to wait for that Nidus. That's uh, very different than it is today. Expected. You can see they're using their Nidus worms here to create a beachhead sending Zerglings against us. you also notice that we're using our Stalkers here to blink away from these Zerglings. This is an example of how a skilled player can use the Stalkers' blink ability to great advantage. Unfortunately, there's simply too many Zerglings for our Stalkers to survive. In order to deal with a Zerg infestation of this magnitude, we're going to need to bring in some additional reinforcements. This is how we use four we've Stalkers shown you to kill how you can use the phase prisms to create a power field anywhere you wish as well as warp in. These two mechanics can be used together to create a large army anywhere on the battlefield. It's so cool. Like, no other RTS did that. StarCraft came out so fluidly and easily. A lot of games tried stuff like that and it was so jank. In StarCraft, it just worked. Uh-oh, it's Zorbals. Blizzard's computer StarCraft is still a game where large armies battle against large armies. Our upgraded zealots can hold the line here for a short time, but in order to really survive against this many Zerglings, we're going to need to bring in some additional firepower. Dude, these zealots are doing incredibly well. These are the Colossus. They're powerful robotic units that can use their long legs to step up and down cliffs. In addition, they have a powerful beam that sweeps backwards and forwards, able to do large amounts of damage to small swarming units like these Zerglings. This makes the Colossus the ideal support unit for this group of Zealots. Three hundred and twenty-five shields and four hundred HP. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's a lot of durability. <laughs> also, these zealots have lived forever. They would have died in half the time in like modern Starcraft. Are they like three, three zealots? I saw they had 60 shields, but like, what? They survived? That's crazy. I think this Colossus is very interesting and is completely awful. <laughs> It's one of those ones that, like, it does single target damage, but it's supposed to sweep across. I think what you're supposed to do with it is, like, start shooting one thing and then click another thing so the beam just strafes across everything. That would work really well in, like, Warcraft 3, but in Starcraft where everything, I guess, once again, if we were playing on normal speed, it would actually be pretty good. But on faster speed, with a maxed out army, impossible to use. You just It'd just be very slowly burning through one thing at a time. It looks like it does uh, AoE damage on its, like, a pulsing AoE near the target that it hits, but against any medium to large size thing, it'd be very, very useless, which does seem to be, like, or why it's changed. Also, it really hated the ground right there. It is cool, though. Kind of wish we had this instead of the Wrath Walker in Legacy of the Void, just to play with it. And while the Protoss have developed many new weapons, the Zerg have continued to evolve. These Zerglings are mutating into Banelings. These small suicidal creatures are filled with explosive chemicals and corrosive acids. Makes the Banelings very potent against zealots that have no defense and even dangerous against the mighty Colossus. Whoa. I feel like those are doing a lot of damage. Years, forced to run, try to get to high ground in order to survive. The Colossus died very quickly. But you can live 
walk. The cliff locking is one of those things that is like super duper cool and never ended up being useful. Like at all, really. There's barely any times in the campaigns where it's good. There's basically no time that it was super, super viable in multiplayer either because maps are always designed against it. It's, uh, it's interesting, but man, it's so like... Uh, it's not great. The Colossus is using our new IK system to step up and down this cliff. It's just one example of the new types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft 2 to make the game more dynamic. It is really cool looking. I love the how... The Colossus is very dangerous against ground targets. It's much more vulnerable to an air counterattack. This swarm of mutalisks will quickly destroy our Colossus and then continue on to attack our base. We'll need to bring in some Phoenix. This is a new Protoss air superiority fighter. It has a special overload ability that allows it to fire its weapon at all nearby enemy forces. Unfortunately, after it overloads, the Phoenix goes offline for a short time. It can't move, it can't fight, and it's helpless against a counterattack. I know this is just a showcase, but the fact that they send in the Phoenix and they just, uh, like, we have our new amazing ability, by the way, they died. <laughs> Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> it feels like a thing that happens in my videos where it's like, okay, I have an idea. I'm going to try. Okay, it failed terribly, but let's try it again. And this time it'll work, I promise. In the hands of a skilled player, the Phoenix can be extremely deadly. If you overload at the right time against the right enemies, you may destroy them all. And there will be no one left to take advantage of your temporary weakness. That ability seems so busted versus overlords. You rush phoenixes out, just blast a bunch of overlords and never safe anywhere. Yeah, that uh, ridiculous ability. Seems like a lot of fun. A lot of work on our terrain here in StarCraft 2. We've got our space platform here, and you can see we've also got a lot of great doodads in this environment, some wonderful texture work. You notice we've got a planet there in our deep sky in the background. There's some asteroids floating in the distance. This is just one example of the types of environments we want to create for StarCraft II. Could have named the planet. Could have called it anything you'd want, I believe you. That could be Marsara for all I know. Well, the Phoenix are very powerful against small flyers like Mutalisks. They're much more vulnerable to heavily armed and armored targets like these battle cruisers. Ooh. I like, okay, so on the uh, battle cruisers, the anti-air lasers are actually coming out of these four things, which I think is really neat. I think the, were the anti-ground things coming out of here before? I don't really remember, but I like that out of the front is where these are coming from. You just don't have the firepower to cut through that thick Terran armor. Looks really good. In order to deal with a battle cruiser squadron of this size, we'll need to bring in our warp rays. Warp Rays. Warp Ray is a specialist Protoss flyer that does additional damage the longer it fires at a single target. This makes the Warp Ray very potent against heavily armored targets. Hmm. That was fast. I mean, I guess the middle one was one that's taking the Phoenix shot, so it makes sense. I I like the color palette of the Void Ray way better than this. I'm glad that they decided to go not with the Warp Ray. It looks weird. It's like striped. It's like the zebra of the Protoss. Same thing that makes the Warp Ray powerful against battlecruisers also makes it very powerful against enemy structures. Okay, we'll see, see how fast... Barracks is taking loads of damage and will try to lift off to escape, but it's just not fast enough to get away from the warp ray. It's a lot of damage. All right, you alien freaks. You made your choice. Now you're gonna pay the price. Warp no. rays are very vulnerable to small units 
You can see these Marines are coming in, and the Warp Ray is just wasting way too much of his damage firing at a single target. Makes the Marines a strong counter for the Warp Ray. You notice our physics system is in action there. As these Warp Rays die, their pieces fall down and slide down the ramp a little bit. It's just another example of the types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft II. I like that they're highlighting stuff now, like that. With our warp rays destroyed, it looks like the Terrans are going to fortify their position here against us. Here As we comes. approach the end of our demo here today, there is one last unit we'd like to show you. Now our foes will feel the power of the Protoss. That's a sick animation. This is the Protoss mothership. It is the ultimate weapon of war in the Protoss arsenal. Does that say 35950 or is that 850? Oh, it's hard to tell on its HP. That either way, that is a lot of HP. <laughs> you are only allowed a single mothership. Wow, look at that energy regeneration rate too. Well, it's full now. At one time. And each mothership costs a significant number of resources to bring to the field of battle. Ooh, I wonder. Has several I wonder if we can see how much it costs if it actually took the money away. Feel the power of the okay, they had six thousand. I have a feeling they didn't actually spend money. It did take eight supply, but yeah, they didn't spend any money. Okay. This one time. And each mothership costs a significant number of resources to bring to the field of battle. Mothership has several special abilities that can really make her worth the expense. First of these is the time bomb. This right here is what made me fall in love with the game. I was like, this is the coolest this is a game ever. Ability that slows down all enemy movement inside the field. You can actually see the missiles slowing down as they try to strike the mothership and stopping just before they strike home. field goes off the missiles fall harmlessly to the ground how is this not in the game in some way shape or form legitimately this makes me sad like when i see this it's so cool i've name one other game one other rts that does something like this there isn't one at least that i know of and for some reason they made this absolutely stunning, awesome, amazing ability. And it's just nowhere. It's not on a purifier mothership. It's not something you can do yourself in Legacy of the Void. It's just gone. Why? It's amazing. It's so cool. This makes... The only complaint that I have is that they should have done this on the ramp so that the missiles then rolled down the ramp. Because then it would be even cooler. The mothership extremely potent against fixed base defenses like these missile turrets. It's, it's In addition awesome. to her time bomb ability, the mothership also has a special attack that she can employ against ground targets. This is the planet cracker. Ordinarily, this would expose your mothership to significant enemy fire. But as you can see, these marines simply don't have the firepower to punch through that thick Protoss shield. And see, this was like the perfect way to make Protoss a complete faction. Because you already have the cheese when you're playing Protoss, so you get the planet cracker to go with it. Crackers and cheese, amazing. Why isn't it in the game? Protoss would be a perfectly fixed and complete race with no issues. All they needed was some planet crackers. Also, it's just so good. The Purifier Mothership at least did plan a crack to some extent, but like, I don't know, I want to do this. Why have I never been able to do this? We proceeded. Since you're only allowed a single Mothership. Sorry, Dustin Browder, I'm going to cut you off one last time. Well, it's probably not the last time. But like, we are two for two currently with, wow, the Mothership is the coolest thing ever. I just, I just wish I could use its abilities. I'm sure that that won't continue. She's usually a very high priority target for the enemy. When you bring your mothership out, you can expect the enemy to throw everything they've got in an attempt to destroy it. Now, 
Their motherships have a limited amount of energy, which controls how often they can use their special abilities. In a real game, this mothership would now be out of energy and very vulnerable to a counterattack, but since this is our demo, we're gonna cheat a little bit here and give this mothership some additional energy. This additional energy will allow our mothership to employ her final ability. The mothership can create a black hole, which is extremely dangerous to enemy flyers. It's so good. Look at the bendy thing. Look at, I don't know how the engine does that, but it like legitimately does and it's so cool. And <laughs> it got turned into Vortex. Vortex was cool, but it wasn't this. This is so awesome. By the heart of iron. Oh, I love it. We proceeded. Directive confirmed. I do like the comparison of the amazing looking black hole and just the like really bad fire PNGs on the mothership. The final battle is joined. Now is the time to bring our full strength to bear. And Taro Tassadar, Commander, carry forth the light of ire. We've shown you some old units with some new abilities as well as a great many new Protoss weapons. We'd like to leave you today with a look at a battle between the Protoss and the Terrans. This is the first time anybody outside of Blizzard Entertainment has seen these two races engaged in an epic battle in StarCraft II. Yeah, so the rest of the video is just a big old fight, and I'm going to talk a little bit over it. The stuff that they showcase is just so neat. Right? It's just these like experimental technology and unit ideas. Not everything made it into the game. And that's fine. Because it's like showing your... It's basically a, here's our creativity. Here's the things that we would like to be in the game. And I think that's so awesome. I do wish that some of these... Th Actually, I wish that all of these things were in the game in some way, shape, or form. A while back, a guy... Uh, DM'd about making a mod for the custom campaign manager that was I think it was Legacy of the Void with all of this stuff implemented for a Protoss faction and I gave him the green light for it but I never heard back unfortunately because I would love to play with this sort of thing it's awesome it's amazing it's probably overpowered who cares it would be fun and I think I think that if you're looking to like showcase a game, just show me your amazing cool ideas for stuff. You know? Just show. Faux show, yo. <laughs> also, can we talk about how long this mothership has lived? Also, I guess she's not doing anything. She's just kind of sitting in the back for the most part. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I really enjoy this video. I think that it is just phenomenal, particularly for the time, just as a way to get people interested and excited. That's a nuclear missile ready. There we go. Nuclear launch I love how you can tell that they got Maru to play the turn player here because uh, you might take out the Sky Toss, but at what cost? <laughs> uh, it's not fair. He's only done that like twice in professional games. Nobody brought their detection. <laughs> the fools. Oh, what a wonderful video. I really like it. Everything about it is fantastic. I think I learned what GG was from this video. I mean, remember, this was like 2010. This is before that was normal outside of like some games. Most games didn't GG like this. Ah, <sighs> but it's beautiful. All right, that is going to be it for today. What? Just, it's awesome. There's so many cool things. If anybody is a really good modder and wants to go make that mod, send me a DM on Discord. 
let's figure something out, man. Like, I want Legacy of the Void beta units version. We'll have to come up with a better working title than that. But if you can, like, make that stuff work and actually want to create a full mod, yeah, let's do it. Because this is awesome. All right, that is going to be it for today, my friends. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Grant Reacts. Uh, I don't know when we'll do the Zerg one. It doesn't have commentary, but I'll see you guys later. Peace.